Welcome back for day 26 of my 31 days of Halloween series. Apologies to anyone who has a fear of clowns, but like every year, there has to be at least one clown in the series. Product details and all that fun stuff will be in the video description below. Let's get started. I don't know why it is, but I'm always excited to do a clown look every year. And to start this bad boy off, I'm taking a super light foundation and lightening it up even more with a white adjuster. I've decided for this look, I want a very distressed and kind of powdery look to the skin. So I'm stippling that on, not really caring if it's perfect or not. And as per usual, I forgot to brow block. So I do that quickly and add foundation to the rest of my neck and chest area before going back and setting them with powder. I'm not really taking the time to be super precise with my brow blocking because I want a really distressed effect to the overall makeup. So. Instead of color correcting and doing that whole shebang, I'm just taking some foundation, stippling that on, and taking just a tiny bit of concealer as well. Don't forget to powder your cake face before moving on to the eyes. By using this lipstick as the base for my eyeshadow, I'm not gonna lie, it stained my lids a little bit, even with a layer of foundation on. Just a heads up. For this method, a little goes a long way with this product. I'm just taking a flat eyeshadow brush and diffusing that color out. So after I've blended out the general lid shape that I want, I'm bringing it upwards into a triangular point. Gotta have that classic clown aesthetic. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Then taking some black gel liner, I'm adding that to the roots of my eyelashes and diffusing that out as well. I've decided to pack on a little bit of red eyeshadow on the upper lid as well as the bottom. Then I'm taking a mixture of black and red eyeshadow and creating the lower triangle as well. I decided I wanted a little bit more definition on the upper lid, so I took some black eyeshadow and dragged it upwards. Don't forget your little accent dots. For a super grungy looking mouth, I took some red and black eyeshadow, pursed my lips and dragged it across. And then I also extended my smile a little bit with my shadow as well. To add a little extra something to the lids, I took some black body paint on a fine paintbrush and made little tiny dots that slowly disperse outwards. I then use that same body paint on my lips as well. And while I'm working away, this happened. Let's just, yeah, let's touch that up there. There we go. Perfect, good as new taking this very sexy pan of brand new body paint. <laughs> I'm then starting on the ruffles. You might want reference photos for this part. I just kind of winged it. To simplify things a little bit, you kind of want to make a bunch of squiggly S's. And you want a very sharp ending to those S's so that you can differentiate which direction the next ruffle is going. Now to add some dimension, I'm taking a darker red body paint and adding that wherever I want the ribbon to recede. And then you're going to want to blend that outwards, of course. As for highlight, I'm taking a white body paint and adding that in any high points. To get a softer blend, I'm just taking my finger and dabbing it out. Now back to the shadows, I'm taking a black eyeshadow and adding that right to the edge of those as well as creating a shadow underneath all the ribbons and a little bit above as well to create some definition. To further the illusion of ruffles, I'm creating the lines going upwards and making sure these lines are kind of on an angle as if they were all meeting at the base of my neck. Don't forget to add some shadow to the receding sides of them because this is gonna end up better selling the 3D effect. Thank you. 
Next, I threw on some black mascara, added a little shadow below my lip, and then it was time to add the extremely dramatic lashes. And there you go. Go scare some kitties. See you guys tomorrow. Thank you.